hi everyone welcome to another tutorial i'm Nikki, and in this tutorial i'll be showing you how to make a laser back with yoke and how to attach the skirt i have videos that that are related to this on my channel but the reason why this one is different is because there are many methods in which you can do a laser back this is a v type of laser back and i'll also be showing you how to make a modesty panel in this tutorial that is why this tutorial is very very essential and it's educative so this is the one i have done um, i'm going to explain how i got this result in this tutorial so you can see i have the one it is the lacing is done with a grommet pin and i use a plastic bone to lace up the back panel so all you need is your material you need your bony you need your grommet pins you need your fabric you need your hair stay in order to achieve a support on your fabric so here this is the pa the pattern that i have drafted i have a video where i explained how i drafted this pattern i'm going to put the link in the decision box so here after the panel has been drafted this is what i have this is for the modesty panel that i used to cut it's like a leasing space and also here the panel is used to cut the fabric and this is what i have after cutting it with the fabric i'm going to attach the yoke with the main back bodies like so so after that the next thing is to go ahead to our sewing and to continue with the sewing so here this is the boning casing the boning casing width is three inches and remember this is where you are going to place it you are going to place it on the other half of the back bodies not it will not extend to the yoke so make sure the length is the the length of the other half of your back bodies then you the first inches i took is my sewing allowance which is half inch then i took another half inch remember i said i have three inches width so you're going to consider your boning this is the boning space this is where the boning will be encased so after the sewing allowance of half inch another half inch for the boning and casing and one inch i just took one inch now which is for the grommet pin so after the one inch i will take take another half inch the half inch is also for a boning so i have two bones there so after the half inch for the boning then i have another half inch for sewing allowance that makes it three inches and sewing allowance so the first sewing allowance i will take this side is half of an inch and the other side also has another sewing allowance remember that is also an half of an inch then i have two inches left for me which is for my bony and casing and my grommet pins so i will do i have done the sewing allowance of half of an inch here i have stitched it down then i will do the another half of an inch that is on the other side is what i am folding in then i'm going to top stitch right away i will top stitch the sewing allowance at this place the first sewing allowance will be sewn with a a a, a lining I, later on i will still use the lining to turn it over to the other side but this one this the sewing allowance i just want to do here is a top stitching sewing allowance i'll just top stitch like so so after i have done that i'm trying to encase Whatever I want to do here, I want to put a bone, I want to put a grommet pin, I'm trying to encase it. So that's what I'm trying to do here. So I will trim off and this is what I have. I will trim off all my sexes and this is what I have. So here, I will explain it now. I'm going to take half of an inch here, which is for my first bony so the first bone will come inside this place after the sewing allowance that is on this side another half of an inch will go go in i'm trying to chalk it out which is for the first bone so i told you i'm using a plastic bone so the plastic bone width is half of an inch and here i have one inch this one inch goes for grommet pin grommet pin is always one inch uh, this uh, space the one inch which will be okay for your grommet pin for a moderate grommet pin because we have bigger grommet pin but this is just like a medium size grommet pin it will be okay for it so after that i will rule the line out you know after taking one inch what i will be left with automatically on that side is half of an inch which will be for the second bone 
so i hope you understand this then on those lines i'm going to run a three stitch and that three stitch will serve will, will serve as the bony encasing stitch so i will just run this three stitch so that the this space will be able to occupy my bones so the bone will stay here and also here so you understand that now so after i have done this uh, whatever i do i have done to one side i will repeat the same process on the other side so i will use the, the two sides to match each other and here is my yoke the yoke will be attached this way i'm going to place the yoke this way and um after i have placed my yoke this is my lining the yoke of my line the lining yoke so this is for to turn the yoke so if you are using a tool you don't need to turn the yoke you just use the yoke you just use it like that but because even if you are using a tool you will still turn in some cases because there are some tool that are not so strong and to avoid it messing up you need to turn it so that it will be stronger and neater so here i'll be turning the yoke like this i will first of all turn the neckline then turn the rest of the yoke so so after stitching this i'm going to turn to the right side i will notch the reason why i'm notching is to give it a neat look so that it will be easy to turn very neatly so i will turn to the right side and uh, sometimes you can use your scissors but when you're using your scissors or any sharp object you must very careful so that it will not uh, tear the clothes so here i will attach the yoke like so the yoke will be attached like so and um, he, this is what i have i will leave sewing allowance of half of an inch here that's what i'm trying to place i'm trying to leave half of an inch that will be used to turn the other half of the back bodies so before i place the yoke i will leave that half of an inch then you can see i have left the half of an inch and i will place the yoke right this way so uh, here i am stitching with half of an inch i'm attaching the yoke to the rest of the bodies by half of an inch and i have attached it leaving that half inch space so whatever i have done here i will do to the other side so here is my lining you can see this white material is called paper stay i put it on all the fabric uh, so that it will give it its kind of support so this is on the lining i put a paper stay and on the main fabric i put a stay that's how i do mine so here if you have the money you can put sd on all the fabrics there's nothing bad in that and here i will turn the other way that's half of an inch that i left on this side will be used to turn the lining right away you can see how i turn the lining so i'll just work on the stitch that is run here already i will work on the stitch to turn it so you must work on the stitch because you need you need a neat finishing so because a stitch has been run there before so you need to work directly on that sewing allowance directly on the stitch of the sewing allowance so i will work on it directly like so and i have turned this side so here the reason why this tutorial is different is i'm going to teach you how to achieve a an easy finishing on your upper bodies and also how to attach your skirt neatly so just take your time and watch the video to the end so here this is what we have we have turned this side and um, the next thing to do now you can trim out excesses and go ahead and iron very neatly as i am doing this i am ironing i i'm just i'm not just showing you how i'm ironing because it will make the video to be longer so after i have done this this is what i have and i have trimmed out all excesses okay I, I, i'm i'm still with the excesses i've not trimmed it out later i'm going to trim it out so here is my bone so i have a you can use a plastic bone you can use a rigidine bone but in this case because i'm not sewing it i will just put it inside a plastic bone will be better because it's it's it it works 
it's it's work is very is better than that of a rigiline bone because a rigiline bone is more flexible and not that strong like a plastic bone so here this is where i'm going to place my plastic bone and i'll cut it to the to, i'll make sure it's not the actual size it's one inch shorter than the space the reason why you must make it one inch shorter than the space is so that you have a sewing allowance left for you so i'll wrap in it with my paper tape to avoid it for me from poking out or from injuring yes the glute and um, here after i have placed the bone i'm going to wrap the second bone now i told you that i left it this is i have only two boning space here so i will wrap the other one also and place it here i'll place it inward so just push it in because the space is just for the bone so make sure the space is as um spacious it's, it's not too spacious because if it is too spacious the bones will be turning and uh, the bones will not give you the result that you need. You see this, the, how I placed the bone. So here will be space for grommet pin. That place that I just chuck will be for the grommet pins. I also have tutorials where I made grommet pins. I will attach it also on this channel because I will not be putting the grommet pins here, but I will do other things. Like this is turning off the back body. Uh, this is joining the um back bodies to the uh, front bodies i've joined the back bodies to the front bodies by attaching the main fabric to the main fabric the main back to the main front i have not attached the lining if you look at it very well i only attach the main fabric to the main fabric so here i'll be attaching the lining to the lining so i did it separately if you want to achieve an inseam finishing so but i have put my measurement you will have put the measurement and the, the sewing allowance must not be too big. So if the sewing allowance that you left is too big, you're going to reduce it so that the side seam will not be bulky. So after I have done that, the next thing to do is to sew, um, join the lining to the lining. What I have done to the main fabric is what I'm doing to the lining right away. So whatever I have done to one side, I will repeat the same process on the other side. So I will just stitch on the... Remember, I'm not just stitching. I have input my sewing allowance here. I have input the measurement and I know what my sewing allowance will be. That's what I am working on. So you input your measurement here on the bust on the under bust and also on the half length so this is the other side so i'm not going to show you the process here because whatever i have done on one side is what i am repeating on this other side so joining the main fabric to the main fabric first and later i will join the lining to the lining so that is what i'm still i'm going to do here i will join the main fabric to the main fabric and also join the lining to the lining i wonder i think i think i've not edited this out i told you i'm not showing you but i'm showing you showing you this already maybe i thought i have cut it out but it's it's still better so the lining to the lining and the main the the main fabric to the main fabric and the lining to the lining so this is the main fabric so in allowance i'm showing you this the second time for you to understand very well so and um the lining to the lining so this is how you can achieve an, a hand seam finishing this is how you can achieve a hand seam finishing so um and if there is any adjustment you can still go through this you just it will take you through this process before you can do any adjustment remember because it's an inseam finishing but it's still easy to uh, to to amend it's whenever there is amendment you can still do amendment you can still do adjustment after the first fitting because this is the process you just undergo but if you do it carefully there won't be anything serious in this so this is what we have this is what we have so whatever i am doing remember i told you it's an instant finishing if i will attach the skirt 
if I'm going to attach the skirt, the skirt will also be attached on the main fabric first before I now use the lining to turn it. You get what I'm saying? If you are working, if you are doing an easy finishing, you first of all attach the skirt, the skirt, the main fabric of the skirt to the main fabric of the upper bodies. And this is what we have. So here I have joined the shoulder to shoulder. I have joined the shoulder to shoulder. I will repeat the same process for the other side. Join the shoulder to shoulder. And this is what we have. You can see the work is neat already. So I'm going to put the link of the front. The how I drafted the front pattern and the back pattern. I'll put the link in the description box so that you will understand how we get here. So here this is the result. You can see the result is very neat and perfect. So after I have done that, the next thing to do is to go ahead now and um, attach our back, the skirt. So we'll bring the skirt now. After I have arranged this, and I will be taking the measurement on the waistline here. I have 13 inches. 13 inches on fold will give me 26 on fold. So here I have 15 inches. 15 inches on fold. Apart from the zipper allowance, 15 inches on fold will give me 30 inches for the waist measurement. You can see that 2 inches, I have 4 inches difference. The, four, the skirt and the upper body is different by 4 inches. So I'll divide the 4 inches into 2, 2. 2 on one side, 2 on the other side. That means when I'm put placing my back, my front bodies, when I'm placing the front on the skirt, I will leave 2 inches space on this side. On the zipper allowance side, I will leave two inches space because if you don't leave the two inches space, it won't be enough. The upper bodies will not reach the skirt. So the reason why you are leaving space, the space you are now leaving is it has been left when I was cutting the pattern. That is the the lacing space that we are talking about. So this is where people get confused. So I will leave the two inches space because it is my lacing space. So if you want to understand it very well, go back to the pattern, how I drafted the pattern from the onset. And you will see where the two inches space has been left. So I'm going to place it after I have left the two inches space on the zipper allowance side. Then I'll go ahead and stitch like so. So another two inches space will also be left on the other side of the zipper too. So that it will match up with each other. I hope you understand that. So I have notched the center front and the center, the center front on the two panels on the skirt and the upper bodies, and it matches each other before I begin to join together. So the joining allowance is still half of an inch. The joining allowance is still half of an inch that I used to join it together. So I am doing this carefully so that you'll be able to understand it better. This is where the logic is, and this is where the trick is. It is nothing serious when you are attaching your upper bodies to your skirt. Just get the logic and you'll be able to get it. So you can see that the two inches space here is left. So consider what I am doing. I am not attaching to the lining. The lining of the skirt is not, I, I didn't carry it along with what I am doing. The lining of the skirt is separate because it is an inseam finishing. So later on, the lining will be used to turn the sewing allowance on the waist so this is what i have this is what i have i have attached the skirt and this is what i have so you can see it is very very neat it is very neat the essence of this is to show you the, this the process here how i attach the skirt so the skirt has been attached and it is very neat you can see this is the result it is very neat. so after that, I'm going to use the lining to turn the sewing allowance all around. So, and, um, I'll be turning everything to the right side here for you to see what we have. So this is what we have on the right side. This is what we have. You can see the lacing space is there already and the rest of the skirt. So here is the modesty panel that will be placed at the back. So here also... Mm -hmm. What I used to cut this has been in the pattern drafting. That is why the pattern drafting is a must for you to watch. So um, the two videos cannot be matched together because it will be just too long.
that's why the pattern drafting is separate and the sewing is separate so i have this from the pattern drafting it, it was cut on food and uh, I, I this is where i'm going to attach it i will mark a point here uh, i'm going to use my hook and high to attach the this it will be a detachable modesty panel then uh, the space that i put there is just five inches space for the pin and i have turned it i've turned the modesty panel you just turn it round to the right side and uh, after i have turned it uh, i'm going to use my pin this is the hook the hook will be placed here on the modesty panel i'll just place the hook here and use my needle and needle to attach the hook so i will do that one very quickly and um, after i have attached the hook then i'll go ahead to attach the high on the dress so there is a, there's a mark here on the dress make sure it is like half inch from your yoke it is just like half inch from your yoke so that it will match up with the neckline so the hook will now be placed like so you can see the direction just place it the direction that i placed my own it must be the same direction so that it will be you it will work so i will attach the eye like this i will attach the eye this way so i'll do that quickly also and um, after i have attached it and uh, this is what we have then this can go with this the hook can be used this way this is how you're going to use it and um, if you want to use the modesty panel you're free if you don't want to use the modesty panel you can just remove it that is why i put a hook because i want a detachable modesty panel so if you're going to a, maybe a place that you just want to be modest enough you can put your modesty panel but if you don't want to use the modesty panel you just want to use the lacing alone you can still do that so this and we have almost come to the end of this tutorial if this tutorial has been helpful please give it a thumbs up like and also share so make sure you follow us on all our social media platforms i'm also in culture on all these platforms and i will see you in my next video and on today take good care of yourself bye